Hello, everybody. It's time once again. Hey, how about some music? For the Mythwits. I'm your host, Peter Bryant. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck it. This is a show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever expanding Geekoverse. We do our fans to be funny, but there are no guarantees. Uh, as I already said, I'm your host, Peter Bryant. And joining me on this episode is my noodly appendage, Mike Kafis. That was smooth and tight. You are not losing it, buddy. You are not losing it. <laughs> Somehow, the, the fucking theme was turned off. I don't know what the hell. Anyway, our guest tonight, you know him. He's been on the show before. Steven Wallet, our good buddy. What's up, dude? Hey, welcome back, Steven. Now, for, for those of you who don't know, Steve Wallet is a producer, director, who has been involved in more than 150 film television productions. He has produced multiple books covering subjects from fantasy to horror to politics. His interests are as varied as the stars in the sky. As such, Steve has had many career changes in his life. He has been a firefighter, a soldier, a criminal, a land surveyor, government contractor, a healthcare consultant, EMT polit politician, entrepreneur, and ultimately an all-around nerd. Um, yeah, Steve, uh, 150 film and television productions. That is, uh, that's impressive. Yes, it's kind of insane, considering how little I've actually done. Right, I know. <laughs> yeah, like you, now, just so, so people know, I mean, like, he's not, he's not Martin Scorsese here. Steve has backed a lot of stuff, and, and, and you've actually been involved in some of this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, most of my film credits are producer credits, you know, putting my money behind what I believe in. Right, and that's mostly what producers do. Some producers get involved, like get way too involved, uh, but they're producers who put in, you know, like millions of dollars, and they, they, they want return on investment. That is the truth. And, you know, most producers that get involved ruin the movies. Absolutely. If you've ever seen one of those movies where they talk about making movies, and, you know, the guy comes in with this script, and it, or girl, whatever, person comes in with this script, and it's an awesome script, and I say, you know what, this would be really good... But could we um, make the main character uh, an urban uh, a city a black girl? It's like, it's a country boy. I, what? You know, and they completely changed the whole movie. And then it's like, yeah, this movie didn't make any sense. It was so disjointed. It's like, yeah, no shit. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So speaking speaking of movies, uh, oh hey Spence. Uh, speaking of movies, um, let's let's do a wrap up real quick because you've come on the show before talking about Word from a Gamer. That was a really big hit for you as it, as movies go, um, and, and you know we were kind of part of that a little bit too. But um, tell, what, what's the status of that now? Is that still on Amazon Prime? So Word from a Gamer is still up on Amazon Prime, and it's still burning through India. I don't know why they love the film in India, but. Indians love Word from a Gamer, so much so that they've actually invited me to be part of the Academy of Film in India. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> well, I hope you like Curry. You know, uh, actually, that, that's actually really neat. That It's so funny because, you know, you think about uh, movies and books and stuff, and we always think we're very, you know, we're very American-centric. And um, it's like some things just take off in other countries like crazy, like – China is a massive consumer of movies. Like, a movie will make so much here and all over the world and everything, and then China will bring in, like, another billion dollars. You know, like, I, I think know. Avengers is super huge in, in China, right? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, you remember our friend uh, George Fisher we grew up with? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he became the lead singer of Cannibal Corpse. Well, Cannibal Corpse has never really done that well in the United States. In Europe, it is rocking it. He's on tour over there every year. Mm. It's like David Never Hasselhoff, enough. right? Yeah. So David Hasselhoff is humongous over in Europe, apparently, or was. Uh, it never really made it very high here in, in, the, in the singing aspects of it. All right. So Word from a Gamer has done well for you. Still, still rolling. Still rolling. And, and on Amazon Prime. Mike, are you, is there something wrong, Mike? Are you okay? My camera's being weird. So okay. give me a second. Okay, all right, just checking on you. All right, and then so you did a second film, and this was this was one that you and I kind of did together, um, and it was like all improv, uh, and it was uh, don't say his name, and apparently that got a showing in L.A. Right? Yeah, it's actually this week. It's oh. showing in L.A. right now. If you awesome. are in L.A., go see it. 
We got uh, up on Nerd Rage News. There's links on Facebook, on our various social media. There's links that you can find out where it's at. But it's playing every afternoon this week in L.A. at the at the film right next to the Academy Awards. Holy shit! At the theater. Hey, Steve, I'm a star, man. I'm on the big screen. You are, man. It's <laughs> awesome. And they translated it into Spanish and German too. Ah, uh, das ist gut. All right, awesome. That is that is amazing. I'm I'm on the everybody. I'm on the big screen in L.A. I've made it. <laughs> and the theater that we made it in is one of the few small theaters that a seven day run there qualifies to film to be a nominee for the Academy Awards. So the film will never get a nominated, but it can be. <laughs> no, that's just, that's awesome. That's, I mean, and considering like like how we did that film, Steve Steve put out a, a call to all his friends. He said, "Hey, I want to do a movie." Uh, I don't. I just have some basic ideas. Um, let's just do this thing. Come on up, and we got up there, and it was literally improv. Absolutely, and you know, I actually the plan I had was a gangster film, but none of my gangsters showed up. So we did what we did. You know, we created a story, and I actually, as the film is pretty crappy, but I have to admit, I think it's a good story. I think it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. A lot of this stuff was one take. I, I'm not a professional actor. I'm not trained to be an actor. <laughs> and the kids, the kids that were in it, they weren't. I mean, nobody was really. We just, we just did a thing. We had no script. We had no rehearsal. And it still turned. I mean, for that, it's it's a fucking it's a miracle that now, the thing was as, as good as it was. You, yeah, you gave me a copy of Word from a Gamer at Total Con. Yes. Do, do I remember correctly that you said that that movie you did you tagged that on the end of that DVD? Yes, there is a link in that, in the Word from a Gamer uh, DVDs to watch that. I am so sorry. I have not watched that yet. I, because I, I could be I could be uh, getting um, you know signatures and shit. I could be getting a, uh, you know. People, you should uh, be. You know, <laughs> you're you're on a. A uh, international podcast with a superstar. Yeah, <laughs> two of them, evidently. And, and I gotta tell you, so Steve, Steve handles some. Or I don't know if you're still doing it, but I know you were doing it. Our IMDb stuff, right? Yeah, I still do. Okay, so it's awesome. I get, I get contacted from people on a semi-regular basis. Hey, I found myself on IMDb because I was on your show. That's awesome. I got to check that off my bucket list. So there's a lot of people that are really happy about being on IMDb because they've come on the show. Hey, yeah, but your, your show is a full production, and that's it is. why IMDb recognizes it. Yeah. Maybe we uh, use that as an advertising point. Get we yourself should. on uh, <laughs> IMDb to be on our show. Yeah, no shit. No shit. All right. So, so Steve, you've also been doing a lot of books, right? Um, yes. You've been cranking. How often do you crank out a book? Uh, in the past year, I've done six. Jesus Christ, that is prolific. Now, are these uh, are these these are kind of like novella size, right? I would imagine somewhere around fifty, sixty. Um, the the smallest one was about fifty thousand words. Most of them have been about seventy five to ninety thousand words. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. Um, and and did you have? I think you have like a is it the the series that you have is it two or is it three? Because then you got. I have, I have one series. And okay. then I have a bunch of individual books. So there's a, uh, remember the video game I did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did a series based on the video game. So that's uh, Nerd Rage Uprising. And then the sequel to that was uh, The Revelations of Aiko. And those, those two books are out. And I'm going to do a third book in the series, which will finish up the series. Though I haven't started on it. Then I did a book called Murder Me Sunshine, which is about a, uh, 12 year old girl who is addicted to murder and it's how she copes with her addiction that's a really short one but a fun read and i did the gorgon's lament which is like sex in the city but it's a murder mystery set in that lifestyle about an artist who has a uh uh what is what would be the word for it it's uh an overly um ambitious boss who wants to get in her pants and she tells him to hit the road and then he ends up dead and you have a crazy story that comes out of that. Okay. I did, I did a guidebook for, uh, called uh, Steve Wallet's Manual of Manliness, which is a guidebook for all men in the world for how to be a man because you need help. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So I just uh, figured I'd spring a buck for the Kindle edition. Not bad. So uh, I, I, I figure it's time. <laughs> it's time. Hey, stop, shut up, you. Hey, Mike, if you're going to... Oh, never mind. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 I will oh, leave oh, that oh. one alone. Uh, can, can we just touch on your... Um, your Susian um, uh, endeavors. <laughs> My Susian endeavors. Well, that book is out of print. That was uh, mm -hmm. Donald Donald Littlehand's Adventures of Politics in Doctor Seuss's Wonderful World. <laughs> <laughs> That's you uh, know that actually went over real well. I sold uh, about ten thousand copies of that book. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and Can then I, I had one about Hillary Clinton too. So I played both sides of the fence on that. Yeah. I, well. I, I actually that like that. I, I like that though. I mean, because like Steve, Steve originally had written the he wrote the Hillary book first. Um, he's like, but I'm going to be fair, and he turned around and wrote a Donald book, and it was that. That's awesome because it's it's not like he's not being like um, one sided on, on the issues. He picks on both. How, why isn't that book just an electronic version though? How come that's not a? It wasn't physical version, but it's out of print now. No, no. Why is it not in electronic version? Because when I converted it to uh, Kindle format, it, the images did not match up right for their formatting. And I don't feel like doing the editing. Hmm. Yeah. Kindle, Kindle is, um, and I, I know, um, let's see, I know Kindle is, I was going to say, I know Audible is, but that's audio only. But like the, all these book formats are very particular. And if you screw something up, they just kick it back, right? I mean, you, it's got to be exactly a certain way. Well, like I had a electronic version of Donald Little Hands and See Us for Crooked, and what happened was, with the way the Kindle format is, the book was a square book, but Kindle's not designed for being square. Right. So the images ended up being chopped, and you could only see part of the page. It, it just it didn't match up right. Okay. Um, now is, is Blasphemous Cocktail? Now you did Blasphemous Cocktails. That was your was that your first? That was your first book, right? That was my first. Yeah. And. Um, is that it's on good. Kindle? Yeah, uh, no, that one's not on Kindle uh, because of all the artwork in it, formatting problems once again. All right, we got to so figure that out. Physical copies. We got to figure that out. That's got to. We got to get that on Kindle. You talk, talk to me. I'll, I'll get you hooked up. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. Um, okay. Because we need, I'll we need to get, up on it. we need to get that on Kindle. No, I'm serious. We need to get it on Kindle because that is a great drink book. I love it. I, I think hey. that, that's. That is an awesome book. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just gave you a positive review on uh, Google Books. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, you want to hear something crazy about Blasphemous Cocktails? Sure. I do. Okay. When I was at a convention earlier this year, I bumped into a guy. And I don't, I don't know him from anywhere, but somehow Blasphemous Cocktails came up. He hooked me up with another guy who bought one of my leather-bound editions for $1,500. Wow. Holy yeah. shit. That is crazy. I know, I know you had very few of those. Uh, there were only 25 ever made. Mm. Well, you know, it's funny. Mike and I run into people at conventions sometimes, right? Because we, we think, you know, we think three people watch this show. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it's just because we, we never get emails. We never get questions. I mean, nothing. It's like our, our listeners are very passive unless they come in, you know, they come in the, uh, the chat room and, and talk with us. And we get good numbers like on our podcast and stuff like that. But, we, you know, we just assume that. Yeah, whatever. You know, whatever. People, There's some people watch. Whatever. People, two of us are us, right? But <laughs> so, we go to conventions, and we run into people all the time that are like, "Oh, I love your show." You're the, like Mike. Tell them the one time, right? You were outside smoking or something, right? Oh, that would have been a way back from when. Yeah, we were at uh, Gary Con, and I was outside, and this guy was like, like literally, sort of, he was having his own little moment. Like, you're a, uh, you're Mike. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, and I'm like. Uh, Kafis, uh, how would you know me? I mean, and he's like, don't you, aren't you one of the intimates? And, and I'm like, well, yeah. And he's like, oh, I, I, I fulfill my Kickstarter. I have to assemble a thousand pieces in, in this kit. And all I do is, I mean, I watch your show. It's so entertaining and I love it. And well, then I know, you know, that, uh, hey, if you're still watching, thank you. So, yeah. uh, it made my day because that was like the first time that somebody was like, wow. No, so I get, I get people on, all the time. On yeah. Sunday, I was out in my yard working, and somebody turns into my driveway and starts honking their horn, right? I'm like, who the <laughs> hell is this? I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody comes down my driveway. He's not kidding. He's, he's in the right? sticks. Yeah. 
So I get out there and the car doors all start opening and all these black people start getting out of a car. I'm oh, like, dear. what the hell? I, I the only black people I've ever seen up here are my friends, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, and these are strangers coming on my property and they're like apologetic to me. Well, it turns out they're related to the family of the person who got murdered in my house all those years ago, right? Oh, wow. Okay. So we get to talking and I, I invite them into the house, you know, we're having a conversation and they see Nerd Rage News thing up on the wall, the clapper board, right? Uh -huh. And the guy's like, you're Nerd Rage News? Oh my God, I saw you on the Myth Wits. And I'm like, you watch the Myth Wits? <laughs> right? And, and I'll start talking to him. Well, the guy, the guy, okay, did you guys ever watch the Antique Roadshow? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's a black guy on Antique Roadshow named Merrill. Okay. Okay, if you ever watch it, look for him. This is the guy who was on my property, okay? Wow. Yeah. And he's a fan of ours. <laughs> What's Isn't awesome if you're awesome? hey if you're watching Merrill, thank you. That's awesome. We, we love it. <laughs> Pete, hold on. We need to do a, a a soft stop on the show right now. Okay. Uh, everyone, please listen to this. If you're listening, if you're watching right now, if you actually watch or listen to this show, like, please take one moment. You can either send us an email at mythwits at gmail .com. You can shout us out at Facebook. Just literally just say something like that. Or what are some other ways? On, on Twitter, I'm we're at Mythwits, at M-Y-T-H-W-I-T-S, uh, at M-I-K-E-K-A-F-E-S. Don't even worry about bothering with Pete. He doesn't do yeah, Twitter. I don't do the, the Twitter. Shout us out somewhere, some way. We actually are curious. Do you actually exist and do you actually enjoy yeah, I know, right? We we really, honestly, I swear to God, we get almost. N well, actually, we get nothing. Like other than people who come and watch the show live, which is awesome. We love we love them. Um, you know, we got David Benavides watching right now. We got Spence watching. Mama Marsh is watching. Um, and and we we really appreciate them and everything. But other than that, we get nothing. Right? Until we I mean, run into people, and it's like, oh yeah, I watch the show all the time. I'm like, well, shit, man. How about you throw us a comment or something? I don't know. Just so. Just so, you, well, you, hey, all you people watching, something you should do: take a selfie of yourself watching the show and post yes. it on Instagram. Yes. Oh my God, that would be the best. If Seriously, you do, if you do that, I will totally share that on our Instagram and our Facebook page and such. Yes, yes. might even like show it on the show. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hell yeah! All right. The first right. person to do that will show it on the show next week. So I don't know if you all can see behind Steve. I'm going I'm to click on Steve right now just to make sure that you can see it while I'm talking. Steve has all the, he has these shelves, and on the shelves you see like herbs and stuff like that. Steve, one of your books, one of your books is Herbo, Herbocopia? Herbo, Herbocopia. Herbocopia. Yep. Okay, I was, I'm pronouncing that right. Um, which I guess you're a little bit of an expert on herbs. I've been doing working with herbs for years. Yes, I could, you could say I'm an expert. Uh, the book is a guidebook for someone who is trying to get into herbs but wants a scientific perspective. So I looked at the 50 herbs that my customers ask me about the most often, and I only looked at medical literature. And if I could find medical literature that backed up the claim about the herbs, I put it in the book. If I couldn't, even if I know the herb will help possibly in certain situations, I didn't put it in the book because I wanted the book to be a book that a doctor could pick up. If he doesn't know the herb, he can look at it, see the reference to the studies, and in, under each herb, I list all the drugs that studies have shown that have problems with the herb. So a doctor could check with that for contraindications. Dude, right. that so, is beautiful. Like, I was just going to ask you, do you list, you know, like drugs that they interact with? Because honestly, herbs are, if they have an effect on the body, they are a drug. So it's like people say, are drugs. Absolutely. Yeah, people say, well, I'm taking, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking herbs. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, you better make sure that whatever herb you're taking is interacting with your drugs because herbs have effects. I mean, you're taking the herb for a reason. You're taking it to help you with something, right? Well, that's what you take drugs for. It's a drug too. So like, make sure it's not going to interact because they do. Right. And one, uh, this is some look, if you guys, anybody gets involved into natural medicine in any way, shape or form, just remember cyanide is natural. Do you mm -hmm. want some? Exactly. Well, exactly. 
Hold on. This is all you need to know. There are two main groups of herbs, right? There's the sativa and the indica. Oh, right? God. <laughs> Those are your two main houses. And then the blend of which is where all other herbs come from. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah that's it. Well, no, well, but, but, but a pamphlet. Boom. But seriously, like there are vitamins that, that are, you know, you could, you could eat 10,000 units of them and you'll be okay. Like vitamin C, you can't, as far as I know, you can't really overdose on vitamin C, but like vitamin A, you take too much of that and it will fuck you right the fuck up. Right. That is the absolute truth. Yep. Yeah. And also thresholds for individuals are different. So you can have 10 people taking the exact same dose and two of them will have serious issues. Six of them will get great results, and two of them will get no results whatsoever. So, so Steve, you know, um, so one of the things, and you and I have talked about this, and, and, and you know, uh, we've debated on this a little bit, but, like, so the FDA doesn't regulate vitamins and herbs and such. Um, but one of the concerns that some people have about herbs is that, um, being that they're not really that regulated, the amount of the the – the actual amount that it says is in it and the amount that is in it, nobody's testing it, right? I mean, no outside okay. party is testing it. Are there problems with that or is that is that handled internally or are there some companies better than others? Okay. Company that you deal with is everything. There are – okay. Federal law does require the FDA to regulate every single herbal product on the market. Okay. Okay. However – the way that they regulate them is not the same way that they regulate drugs. And that, that becomes a real issue. So when you're looking at the regulation of herbs, a, if I sell you a bottle of herbs, here's a bottle of herbs, and I say this will cure A, B, and C, that is a violation of the law unless you have FDA approval to say it will cure A, B, and C. But I can say this will support heart health or this will support joint health. Right. That is not a violation. The second thing is the amount of ingredients of the herbs that are in the packaging must be within 5% of what's on the label. If it's farther than that, it's not legally sold. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't companies violating that. There are companies violating that rule every single day, and some of them are the big companies. So you have to be very careful when you're looking. Like uh, one of the companies I used to deal with was um, – it was, uh, I won't say its name because I don't want to get sued. I was going to say, don't say the name. Don't say the name. <laughs> this company was an independent company that provided the, some of the best herbal stuff out there. They sold to Procter & Gamble. Their quality <sighs> dropped so bad that they had 216 recalls in one year. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Right. Right. So, they so that's a problem that you have to worry about. Hey, so, uh, well, yeah, hold on, I, real, real quick, Mike. Uh, so, j just real quick. So, one of the services you have a health food store that you run. One of the services you pro provide to your customers, and something that people should take into consideration if they're going to be taking herbs and stuff, is to is to get a good health food store that they work with, right? And like, make sure you're working with somebody who, like, because I know you you go to conventions all the time. You do your research. They should they should definitely make sure that they, um, you know, have have a working relationship with their health you know, the health food provider, because, um, like you're saying, the regulations are different. So make sure you, you know, you work with somebody you trust. Yes, absolutely. And there's, there's another level to this. Also, if you're going to a health food store and they tell you that something that they're recommending is going to cure something run away, right? I don't sell anything that I'm going to tell you will cure anything. Okay, that is a violation of U.S. law, and if someone is telling you that they are going to cure you, they're probably a con man. Right, because it's mostly about it's, – it's about treatment, right? Yes. Yes, it's, it's about supplementation to a good diet, which might, depending on your genetics, improve your lifestyle. Right. Absolutely. Very good. All right. All right. Uh, listen, listen. Can we, can we stop bearing the lead? And oh, yeah. Let's can we can we address the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room, please? Can we? Do you mind? Can we do that, please? So you're gonna bring I'm it sorry. down? I left my penis in the other room. Oh boy! Well, <laughs> uh, leave it there. Leave it there. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. That oh, sorry. Wanna, that is not what I want to put my foot in. Um, 
So, uh, I have a very, I have a very um, calming, very interesting question I would like to ask you, Steve. All right. Um, I'm going to try and be as professional and as calm as possible. All right. May I? Go right ahead. All right. What in the actual fuck is going on that you're selling shoes? Are you fucking Al Bundy? What in the hell? Well, Al waste. Bundy was my hero. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I love feet. <laughs> I love you, man. I swear to God. Just what I think. Steve can't get any more Steve. Steve mm -hmm. gets more Steve down the steviness of the Stevie road to Stevieville and starts selling shoes. So, um... Please, enlighten us with the story. And as you do this, I know Pete's, I don't probably, I think we're showing pictures as we go. Yeah, but we I'm are. actually pull up, I'm pulling up some of these pictures on the, on the website, and uh, we're going to look at them because. Okay. I'm so I've designed 30 pairs of shoes, some for men, some for women, some that are unisex. I've released three of them. Every three weeks, I will release one more until I go through all 30. Any shoe that I sell seven of, in a 30-day cycle, will go into my permanent catalog and will always be available. If it does not make seven, I'm ditching it. That design obviously isn't good enough if people aren't buying it. Right. Now, these designs are being made by a master shoemaker in Italy, a guy named uh, Luke, Luca Botticelli. I'm horrible with Italian names, so I mm. probably just butchered that thing. And the shoes are made with uh, high-quality Italian leather, they're handmade. These are, these are masterpieces that you can put on your feet and will last you for many years. And the beauty of it is the price includes the shipping from Italy and the return shipping if you don't like the shoe. Right. Hold on. Let me, let me, Mike, are you ready? I'm sharing. Okay, Mike, I'm sharing your, your, your page or your yeah, share. Hey. I'm sharing your share, whatever. So go ahead. All right. All right there we go. So this year we're looking at the uh... – the hell is this one here, Steve? Nerd this is... Raid Shoes. That's the first one. Okay. So that's... this is the, – the sole is designed to be long-distance walking, okay? A comfortable shoe that you can go to any convention and wear all day long while walking the floor. It's high top, so it gives you ankle support. It's stylish. And best of all, if you like doing Fortnite dances, this is the shoe you want to wear. <laughs> oh, my God, Fortnite dance. Yeah, that's right. You are way into Fortnite. I love Fortnite, man. Oh, man, yeah. you know, I had Fortnite up running uh, through Twitch on, uh, for the World Cup on Sunday. We ran it all day long in my household. We were screaming at the TV. We were throwing stuff. <laughs> you know, Steve, I got to admit, that is a good-looking shoe. That is a good-looking shoe. Now, they're not cheap, though, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're high-quality shoes, but you, you pay a few pennies for it. Yeah, they're not cheap, but they're in a reasonable price range for a good quality shoe. They're right. hitting between 150 and 250 a pair, depending on the specific shoe. Um, I mean, like that's the, unheard of. I will say that's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I also, I have uh, male designs, female designs, and unisex designs. So some of the future designs are out of this world hot for chicks. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yeah. So I, what... I've been showing them to women for quite a while now to get and tweaking them to get the right. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I know I'm being generic. So you know what? Fucking crucify me, whatever. I'm just going to go from my experiences from every single woman I've been with. Women love shoes more than guys. I just, that is just my complete observation. I have never yeah. known a woman that, that likes shoes less than guys do. And they will pay for money for it. What's that? Jennifer, can I get a witness? Yes, that's that's your so, This shoe that you're looking at now, Nerd Living. This is the type of shoe that I wear every day. I love slip ones. So this shoe has been designed for somebody to wear while they're at home, in the office, walking short distances. I probably wouldn't wear this shoe for like a twelve hour day. I don't think that it would be the perfect shoe for that. But for your general just Living your life, this is an awesome show. You know, and this show is, the show the bottom of the sole. Do you have a picture of that? Uh, I'm on the website. So okay, so if you cycle button. down a little bit, you can okay, there, there you go. You can, go, you can cut across. Bottom of the sole. Oh, look at that! Go. That's a cool looking. That's that's cool looking. That shoe's got some soul, baby. Doesn't it? 
Yeah. And, and because these are handcrafted, every shoe is unique. So the soles will be slightly different on every one. Hey, I will say this. I, you know, I got to be fair. There, uh, I don't know if Greg is still in the room, but, but buddy from work, Greg, uh, Tom, he, well, I'm not going to say his last name. Greg jumped in. Uh, he, he will pay a lot of money for shoes. Like I was talking to him the other day. He's like, he was telling me, like, he's got a ton of shoes, and he, he doesn't care. He'll drop 250 on a pair of shoes, no sweat. To me, that's a heart attack. Like, I'm like, 250 for shoes? And you know what? It's it's completely irrational because oh, if – I agree. If, I'm the Because if I, bear, if I buy a pair of shoes and they last me like a year and a half, I'm totally getting my money's worth because I will only buy, you know – a pair of shoes a year or every other year and if they can last that long it's totally it's totally worth 250 bucks i mean like i would buy a pair of jeans that i you know that that only last a year that i wear you know on a regular basis but you wear those shoes every day and you walk on them you know like like it's the it, they, they take the biggest beating of any piece of clothing you have so i'm kind of hypocritical on that i'm like oh you know 200 bucks for a pair of shoes but it shouldn't be you you should be willing to pay that for a pair of shoes okay if they're gonna last now, you hold so, on because I gotta, I gotta get to this next shoe because okay. this, this is the one that could quite possibly like have me throwing my money at you and i hate you for that steve that's and a good looking you. shoe that's a good oh, looking I, shoe i'm buying three pairs of these for myself dude that that is a that is a <laughs> nice dress shoe i love wingtips yeah, and it, if you notice, it's two tone. It's like ox blood yeah. with yes. a sweep of black through the middle. Oh I, God, I like that. Sharp. That's pretty. Uh -huh. That's a pretty shoe. So this, part, this part right here, I, I don't know. You're not seeing my um. My, we're seeing we're seeing your mouse. Okay, that that, that part there is black. Yes. yes. Oh, I like that. That is a good yeah, little if you, shoe. If you cycle down, you can see close ups of it. Okay, here we go. That oh, is a going. sharp shoe, dude. Should be one more to the close up. There you go. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try and get used to the old uh, Nerd Rage logo there. I don't know if it goes, <laughs> with the, you know, the dressiness. But I mean, you yeah, know. Yeah, but that's hidden under your pants if you're wearing proper length pants. That's correct. I mean, you just heard Pete and I say that we don't really buy the right kind of clothing. <laughs> no. Oh, ho, ho, ho! I said shoes. <laughs> I buy good clothing. Now, now, here's another thing. With, with good quality shoes like this, these are shoes that can last you a lifetime. If you take care of the leather, the sole might wear out. But you can go to a local cobbler for 80 yes. bucks and have it resold. That's, That's true. the beauty of a quality shoe. You buy a cheap Walmart shoe for 20 bucks, that thing's going to last you six months if you're lucky, and then you're throwing oh, it away. Dude, that's it. Yeah. Dude, I bought, a pair, I bought a pair of dress shoes from like a Target or one of these stores, whatever. And, you know, they're dress shoes, so I wear them... At what once every couple months really because i don't really do a whole lot of dress shoe things do this shoes only last me like two years so i wore them maybe 10 times you know what now, i mean like now steve i got a i got a question for you. i gotta ask you because i gotta know i am a gentleman of a certain girth of foot all right and uh, i haven't looked exactly i haven't seen the sizing chart here but uh are you going to be able to fit uh, a gentleman of my girthiness of foot? Okay, so the basic website does not allow for wide shoes. However, oh. I'm speaking with Luca, and there is a way to get wide shoes. I just don't have that worked out yet. Okay. Was it you're the second person to ask me that question. Dude, I'm number three because I got some big, fat fucking feet. My feet are so – I'm telling you, my feet are so fat that I buy like a half a size to a size bigger because my pinky toe will drill a hole through the side of a shoe. I'm not kidding. So I have a cure for that. I Cut have the a, toe a off? I up at my house. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, you know, Dude, I, I have, cons I have considered size. it. That fucking toe <laughs> is useless. The only thing it does is tear holes through my shoes. I'm not kidding. You see my shoes? There's a hole right where the pinky toe is. Every fucking pair of shoes I own. That's mine funny. is even worse because mine, it's not the toe. It's actually the actual like side of my foot. Mine br busts through the actual side of the shoe. Yeah, we got some fat-ass feet, Mike. I, I know. <laughs> my feet uh -oh. are like baseball bats. <laughs> so the width thing is being addressed. Okay, and, good. And I believe that will be addressed very shortly.
Fantastic. All right. You know, I actually talked to... Oh, I'm not even going to get into it. Never mind. I'm going to skip that. That's too personal. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> it's about my toes. But anyway, all right. So, Steve, I think we have covered, like, every fucking thing you're doing, which is uh, is a lot of stuff. Uh, but we got some other we got some other business to attend to. Um, so, so, Mike. All right. So, for those of you who don't know, um, if you're only watching the video, well, thank you because you are in a, in a distinct minority. But you guys don't get to see or hear um, the wonderful production I do of the, our summer movie draft um, updates every week. So I urge anyone who's, who watches to still go and subscribe to our podcast feed because I do a pretty good uh, thing here. Uh, Pete, did you have a chance to listen to this week's? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. You do a good job with that wrap up. It's good. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the work you put in on that. Yeah. I. Uh, but I. Yeah. So you heard it. So. But it's really good. I mean, you know, and uh, things are really kind of heating up. Uh, and for second for place. One... Yes. Huh. For second place. Yeah. Yeah. Heating up. Yeah. Yeah. For... Yes. For second place, things are really heating up. <laughs> um, really. <laughs> first place is sort of. It's a bit of a lock. <laughs> it's a bit of a in in stratosphere. Just... I, I'm finding just interesting facts to talk about instead of <laughs> first place. <laughs> no, it, oh, it, just in case anyone's hearing this for the first time, they have they haven't found the movie draft thing. Uh, these fools let me get um, uh, Endgame and Toy Story Four, and with those two movies, I have literally obliterated everybody else. Like. I got Hellboy, and I spent way too much money on it, but I had to spend money on something. Hellboy earned me sh nothing. I might as well not even have bought it. It's like... <laughs> it's like one of the worst movies. It totally is. But you with the best earning movie and the worst earning movie. Of the pretty, pretty much. And um, so so I got... You know, well, I took a chance. I didn't know. I didn't know what the new Hellboy was going to be like. I was like, oh, what the fuck? I got some money. I'll buy it. Um but but yeah, so first place is the totally locked. There's just there's absolutely zero chance anyone's gonna catch up with me. So Mike and I talked about it, and we we were like, well, that's no fun. That that actually ruins the draft because like it's no fun if there's no competition, right? So we have actually turned the draft into the race for second place. So yeah. so Mike, talk about the heated. I just want to explain to everybody that that second place is like a heated run because we're actually oh, focusing it, on that. It is, and God, I'm I'm like racing to try and pull up the uh, the. Uh... Thing. Where is it? I'm, I'm not so, so it's that. so it's we got Scott Ziegler, we got A. Kovacs, his the, the, the two of them run um, Empty Set Entertainment, and um, uh, they do like Scott writes all these awesome novels. If you if you've never read a Scott Ziegler book, fucking what's wrong with you? If you're a nerd and you love like nerd stuff, Scott Ziegler writes awesome stuff. Read Steve's stuff first, but then read Scott's. Um, but Scott writes some. Oh, he's such a good author, and. Um, we convinced them two to come on. They did the movie draft with us, and uh, we had Violet Lavoie come on. One of my favorite. I, I love Violet. She is so funny and so just like I don't know. She just she is so awesome in like the shit that she does. That dude, the hot wing thing. She was off the hook with some of her answers, but anyway. So the three of them played with us, and um, so Mike A and Scott have really been kind of jockeying for second position. Um, <laughs> poor Violet. She's fifth place. Yeah, all the way. So I'm almost there, ready to go. You did such I, a good job, I, dude. Man. I have been stalling. Come on, man. There we yeah, go. Yeah, here, right. here we go. Here right. we go. Right. Um, so, uh, there's this to look at, and then um, this is a little more. Um, yeah, they can't see most of that, dude. It's like off screen. Oh. There we go. That that. There, there we go. Can you can you bring that over a little bit anyway? Like, let's scoot it over. Yeah. Minute. Give me a minute. I'm working with a lot of a lot of a lot of ball, balls in the air here. All right, there we go. That's a little better. Okay. So, uh, Pete's over there with 160, uh, 1.26 million dollars. I'm the green um, line. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm the blue see, line. Seven hundred fifty-eight million, and. Uh, and then uh, Scott Sigler is really kind of catching up. And the, the scary thing is, and here was what we need to talk about. The scary thing is he has one movie. I am on, I'm on my plateau. I have nothing to come out. 
I'm just riding the rest of the month out. Until oh, you're ends. you're done. I, uh, well, I've been doing a lot of research on Hobbs and Shaw, and they're thinking, and that's why. Remember yesterday, I asked, I was like, "What was that bro thing you said about uh, uh, what it's going to earn?" Well, yeah. it's opening weekend and double it. So, um, if it, it all depends on what its opening weekend is, if if Hobbs and Shaw does seventy million dollars, oh, you still got Hobbs and Shaw coming in. He does. Oh, he does. Oh, okay, okay, right, all right. I am just a hundred million. I'm just a hundred. He could take you. He just could, maybe. But but um, did Violet jump up above A? Yes. So you did. Not, did oh, you maybe, not listen? No, maybe I didn't listen to this week's. Holy shit! So Violet took third place. Oh yeah. See, we're gonna listen to it then. Oh, I meant fourth. One, two, three. Fourth place. Oh shit, we have to listen to that. All right, hey Mike, your screen is all like kind of like out of sync and stuff. So, oh shit, hold on, we disconnected. Something went wrong. Oh shit, what the fuck? Uh oh. Hold on, give me a second. Come on. All right, I picked it back up. Go ahead. All right. Uh, let me pull up the. We're gonna do. See if I can do this really quickly. That is the audacity down here, and here is this week's. Tell me you can hear this now. Yep. This is the Mythwits 2019 Summer Movie Draft Minute. I'm your host, Mike Cavis of the Mythwits. Here are your standings as of Friday, July the 26th, 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, in an unlikely, unprecedented upset for the privilege of being the fifth place conservator. Empty Set Entertainment's very own Director of Doom, A. Kovax, is in fifth place with $458 million. In an even more unprecedented, inexplicable turn of events, author and movie critic Violet Lavoie climbs out of the bowels of last place like an American ninja warrior clutching the top of the warp wall. She is now in fourth place with Four hundred and eighty-six million dollars. Future Dark Overlord Scott Sigler is in third place with six hundred and forty-six million dollars, but continuing to unabashedly edge his way closer to claiming my God-given birthright. Speaking of my role in life, the guy that is always in second place, me, Mike Cavis, has seven hundred and fifty-eight million dollars. Unlike Number Peter two. Bryant being in first place with one point two six billion dollars. Here are two lesser-known facts that are way more interesting. First, babies are born without kneecaps. And second, there are more micro-creatures living on your body right now than there are people alive in the world. This has been your 2019 Mythwits Summer Movie Draft Minute for the week of July the 19th to the 25th, powered by Aether Forge Creations. That's uh, that is impressive. Violet, Violet climbed out of fifth place. I know. How the she fuck? What did it? What did it? Uh, uh, what is it? The Lion King. Actually oh yeah, she had, got Lion King. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, the Lion King actually gave her two hundred and some like eighty or ninety million dollars. Man, it's just crazy. Does, does A have anything left, or is she spent? A has hold on a has uh let's see nope a has nothing left yes oh fuck left. she is gonna be in fifth place <gasps> dude she was in second for like so long like for a while he was in second and third yeah oh shit yep. hey steve and you it, know what it's... we should bring steve on next year for this steve you like movies right I love movies. All right, you got. We got to get Steve on this one next year. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because it would be good. He, he, he'd be one to be involved. And in. the only thing is, like, well, not the only thing, but we're trying to get uh, A and Scott on board for doing this with us next year. And hopefully, if we go to uh, Fest again, yeah, uh, I, don't, that yeah. a, I don't know the whole like Sigler Fest thing. I, I don't know how that's going to work out. But all right, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But regardless, yeah, I, I definitely I want people who are uh who want to promote stuff so steve you're definitely would be in for that so why not so all right 
uh, that's that. Uh, I'm kind of shaking in my boots a little bit. Uh, it is definitely going to be a little, little, little scary because... I like this. I'm glad there's a finally a fucking shake up in this one because there's been it's been really kind of like you know pretty predetermined you know like so I'm really glad there's been some shake up. All right, Mike, are you ready to do a game? I am. Except, All right. hold on, real quick. First, everybody, make sure you check out nerdragenews.com uh, for all of Steve's cool stuff. Uh, you can also go to aliveshoes.com forward slash nerd dash rage dash shoes. Um, let's see. And then there's uh, alive shoes and there's forward slash nerd living and aliveshoes.com forward slash nerd dash professional. Um, and where, oh, oh, you go on Amazon? If you go on Amazon and you search Steve Wallet and that's wallet with two T's. No. <laughs> Dr. Steve That's Wallet. That's true. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Steve Wallet. But if you just type in Steve Wallet, you'll, you'll find his books. Um, yeah, just type Steve Wallet on Google. You'll find a lot of crazy stuff about yeah. it. Yeah, and he has an app. We didn't, we didn't even re- – we kind of like just kind of passed the app. But he's got um, he's got his Nerd Rage Uprising app, which is a, yeah, a game you can play. It's pretty cool. It's fun. It's a fun little game. Mike, you ready oh. for the game? Yeah, man, let's right, do this. Here we go. You're going to hear music, and you're going to be up. Okay, here you go. I'm controlling the board, so Mike doesn't... Yeah, whatever, anyway. All right, ready? Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your host and uh, game master, Michael Capitz. And today we are going to play a game that is yet undetermined with the title. It's kind of like a trivia number science game. What would uh, Pete? What did you say? Uh, there was a guess, uh, like factoidia or something. We'll, we'll come up with something. This is it's kind of a new yeah. game. Mike sort of slightly yeah. sprung it on me. So but. I, I've been doing these once in a while where I, I come up with these interesting facts, and uh, basically I present them to you. It's it's a it's learning through games. Okay, because these are some facts that are just some of them are very mind blasting. So that's the part that I really enjoy about them. So we have two people, uh, pa- Petra and um, uh, Steve- Stefan, and I will be giving each of you um, some statement, uh, fact, scientific fact, with some numeric amount that's missing that you will have to guess uh, the correct number, date, and or value. So... Um, since there are two people, we will uh, basically just do the person who goes, um, basically gets closest to it. If you're over or under, it doesn't matter. If we had three people, then we would do prices right rules. Cause okay. obviously. All right. So, so Steve and I are going to guess on this. You're going to give us a thing and we're going to give you a number and we're both going right. to guess this number and whoever's the closest gets the point. That is correct. Fantastic. Now, okay. Um, and, and uh, yeah, there's no sense in using, I don't have to use science. Um, to see who's more right, because it's either, you know, the number, it, it is uh, quantifiably um, okay. correct. You don't have to use your beep, bop, boop, beep, your bop, boop. Right. <laughs> right. All right, so Mike, how many questions opinion, are there? And that's just so, okay. Just so yeah, I make sure, because I didn't ask you this. How many questions? Uh, I was, uh, uh, I just did six questions with a okay. uh, possible tiebreaker. All right. Fantastic. All right. And you're keeping score for me? Yeah, I am. I'm on it. Love you, buddy. Love you. Okay, here we go. And uh, we'll start with Steve. Uh, Since you're our guest, and then we will alternate who gets to go first. All right? So, Steve, the adult human skeleton has 206 bones, typically. Okay? However, babies are born with an average of blank bones. So how many bones are babies born with? I mean, you would be correct to assume that it's, around 200 ish but de- obviously it's either less or more so uh steve how many bones do you think uh, i'll go with 225 225 all right and peter <laughs> i'm gonna say it's gotta be less i don't think babies lose bones i think they gain them i'm gonna go with because i know they teeth teeth count as bones right um I'm not sure. I'm going to say 200. Okay. Uh, Steven, 
Yes. You are awarded your first point. Wow. Awesome. Hold on, wait. Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to do the sound effect because someone's always going to be right. So, Steve, you get the point. But Steve can still get his, his good buzzer. Do you want his good, You want the good buzzer? All right, I'll give you the good buzzer. There you go, Steve. All right, there we go. So, uh, babies are born with an average of 270 bones. Pete, would you fail to Jesus understand... Jesus Christ, they lose fucking bones. <laughs> In their head alone, there's constantly, there's bones oh, that are born. Oh, shit, they fuse. Ah, oh, fuck, I forgot about that. Yeah, right, it's, oh, fuck, right, they fuse together, right, I forgot about that. That's right, okay. So, hey, listen, that was the first question. I think, I mean, it, you like these, right? This is yeah, I mean, that's interesting. No, that's cool. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I forgot I forgot about bones fusing together. All right, go ahead. This one is more historical in nature, and I doubt you would really know it. Um, <clears throat> so in medieval Europe, a moment, okay, a moment was exactly how many seconds? A moment. Peter, you get to go first. A moment. What the fuck? Okay, a moment. <laughs> With a defined amount of seconds. Okay. All right. The medieval people, they have these weird things. Like, it's not going to be like 10. It's not going to be some nice, easy, divisible thing. It's going to be some kind of weird fucking like 12 or 7 or some shit. I'm going to say 7. I'll go 7. You're saying 7 seconds. Yeah, because it's lucky or some dumb bullshit that the medieval people would go with. Some superstitious something or other. Something like okay. a king's a king had seven fucking toes. So that was seven minutes. That was sad. that was a moment. All right. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead, Steve. Well, as as he guessed what I was going to guess, I will go with eight. <laughs> you're uh you're sniping him. Well uh I'm going to have to say, again, Steve is correct. Son of a bitch. Here you go, Steve. Now, what I wanted you, what, what, I, what I'm going to say to you, which is, would have been a hint if I had to, is that think about the time and, and time dilation and, and things, the, the lifestyle of time that was back then, okay? So, in other words, you know, it took uh, weeks to go to the next town. It took longer time, so... Things would be kind of uh, spread out more in that uh, a moment is actually defined as 90 seconds, a minute and a half. So wow. when somebody said, take a moment to compose yourself, maybe it was like, you know, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. sit down, take a moment, breathe, take a moment. drink water. <laughs> 90 seconds before they had to say, the British are coming. <laughs> I did not know that a moment was a measure of time. Okay. Right. There you go. Uh, okay, here we go. Number three, uh, Steve, you go. You are first. Here we go. Okay. It takes approximately 13 minutes for a camel to drink their maximum possible amount of how many gallons of water? Now, while we're on this subject, are we of the opinion and we understand that they do not, they do not store water in their homes, Right. We are, we are of a scientific level to know where I'm just throwing this out there for anyone in, in our audience to know that uh, camels humps are actually more for where they store fatty, fatty and food, yeah. nutrients, but they do not store water. That said, for no in particular reason, anything related to this, Steve, your average, and I don't ask me if it's a hump, a double humpback or what, or an African swallow, okay, but the average amount of water that a camel maximum average that a camel can drink in 13 minutes is how many gallons all right before i give an answer i have to say i respect your opinion on this water thing but you know you you have your right to it anyway oh that's a dig on me that's a dig on me <laughs> ouch um i will god I never really thought about this. I'm going to say 18 gallons. So say you. So say you all. 18 gallons. How about you, Peter? God, 18 gallons. That's a lot of fucking water, man. But What's it's it a camel. Or... 
but a camel is a big fucking thing. I mean, they're huge. Uh, they're huge. Do I go under or over? Fuck, because that like eighteen gallons seems like a lot, but maybe not really. Um, shit, because if go I say nineteen and it's any more than eighteen, what's that? Go against your grain because you've been wrong twice. I know. I fuck. I don't know. <laughs> Fifteen gallons. Sure. Uh, so, oh, so Steve said eighteen. Eighteen. I say fifteen. You're saying, fifteen. Peter, guess what? Huh? You're wrong again. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is for me. <laughs> God damn it. Because it takes approximately 13 minutes for a camel to slurp up 30 gallons Holy of water. Shit. Holy hell. God damn, that's a lot of water. Then oh. that's proof that they keep it in the hump. Yep. <laughs> no, it's in their feet. Uh, you know what's in it? you know what's even more interesting about camels? They have fucking crystals in their nose that they can draw moisture out of the air. That is nuts. That is awesome. That is nuts. Oh, did I mention that these are facts that'll fuck you up? Yeah, no, right. Thirty <laughs> fucking gallons. Jesus Christ. So right. what you're saying is if I'm in the desert and I need water, kill a Drink fucking a camel. camel. <laughs> Drink the camel blood because they do. They carry that water in their bloodstream. Fuck oh, yeah, man. I'm a vampire. That shit. Hey, that's why I always carry a pack of camels in my pocket. Nice, mm -hmm. good one, good one. No, f oh, right. wait a minute, but you gotta have the filtered kind because you know the the impurities in the blood. Of and course. Everything. Yeah, right. Okay. Hey, Rochelle, how you doing, honey? All right. Um, let's see. Uh, what is going on? Here's our next one. Uh, it's number four, and that means it is Peter's turn, correct? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so I can right. fuck this one up first. Okay, go ahead. Pete, there is approximately – oh, this one is uh, – I'm going to give you a minute, okay? I need you to – this is about clouds. Give me okay? about a minute. About a minute on this one. Yeah. A, so, moment. a moment. A yes, moment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Very. It's more than a minute, Steve. So – there is approximately, you know what, a, a, cum, a cumulus, cumulus cloud. Yeah, sure, sure. Right? Real white puffy ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So there, you can approximately, from one cubic meter, okay, so about three feet or so, three cubic feet of water, okay, sure. there is about a half a gram of water vapor that you can pull from a cumulus cloud, okay, half a gram. Now, how much? Would a one kilogram, a uh, kilogram, a one kilometer co cumulus cloud weigh? A kilometer. I mean, you know, it's a cloud, right? I mean, they float around in the sky. Say this again. No, no, say this again. All right, start over. So if you had how much? What was this? What? Half a gram of water in a cubic meter. All right. Cubic. Okay. So a kilometer, kilometer is a thousand meters. So you're saying a cubic kilometer, right? Yes. So it's a thousand by a thousand by a thousand. Fuck me, a thousand by so a thousand by a thousand. That's a million by a thousand. You better not start pulling out a piece of paper and doing math, okay? That's a so how many how many grams in a, in a in, in the normal one in the, in the thing? Half a half a gram. Half a gram. So, I'm gonna say three hundred thirty million grams. Three hundred and thirty million grams. All right. Uh. Uh, Peter has given his answer in grams. Stephen, you do not have to give your answer in grams because I have it in all um, of them. So I can give it in grams. Whatever you'd like to That's do. That's fine. What? So it's. Can you repeat the question? Oh shit! You said three grams. Fuck. That's not three right. Grams. I didn't say three grams. I said half a gram. Third gram. Half a gram. Cubic meter. Fuck, I did that math all wrong. I I'm going to stick with 330. I did. I did it all wrong. 
half and gram per cubic you meter. You guys were correct? just assuming that it's, that it's the actual weight in water. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that you guys are assuming that. I'm just... Fuck, I don't know, dude. It is too much math. Well, you didn't give a volume of water. You gave a weight of water. A gram is a weight. You asked for weight, so... What are we looking at? A uh, thousand, thousand, thousand. That's, that's water a, vapor. That's water what? vapor. Just that's say a number. Just whatever. Gazillion. That's a, that's a, I I will I will admit that I may have been drinking tonight. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I I had a. I might have had a couple red red. Was this? Hold on. This is a really good hey, beer, but Scott good beer. Pond in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Scotty Pond. If you've never had Racer Five beer, this is a fucking awesome wow. beer. It's one of my all favorite right. beers of all time. Love this beer. I'm, I'm trying that. All right, Steve. I need an right. answer. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying to convert grams to kilograms. So I'll just give it to you in grams. We'll go with five. What did I say? Hold on. Stop. It was five. Hundred million grams. Ooh, that's Five bigger than my million number. Grams. <laughs> <laughs> Just say a number. God damn it, Mike. Let's go. What is it? Hey Google, convert five hundred. It's five million. million. No, five million grams. Five million grams. <laughs> five hundred thousand. Are you saying five hundred thousand kilograms? No. What are you saying five. in the? Five million grams. Yeah, I guess that would no knock three zeros off of that. So what would that be? Five thousand kilograms. Okay, so you're saying five thousand kilograms. Yeah, why not? Pete, I'll you're let, saying, I'll let you're that saying one. <laughs> I said three hundred thirty thousand grams. Three hundred thirty thousand grams. All right. Well, first of all, I'm going to give you this in English terms. Okay, what a one kilometer cubed cloud of water vapor, you know, cloud, will weigh 1,100,000 pounds, which is 5,500 5, tons, or, Steve, you should have stuck with your original answer, of 499 kilograms. So, although you are wrong, you are less wrong than Pete, so you're right. <laughs> there you go, Steve. Right, I swear to God, these all are not. That was the worst one. I, all right, I was going to say, because that took way too much time. Let's fucking let's go. Come on. Here we go. Uh, Steve, on September the 13th, 1922, in El Aziza, Libya, scientists recorded the hottest temperatures ever measured on the planet Earth. The mercury soared to what temperature? It's best not be in that fucking Celsius either. Well, I mean, I again, I have it in no. freedom height, in freedom, uh, freedom height, or in uh, Celsius. We're doing it. One hundred and forty-four degrees Fahrenheit. One hundred and forty-four degrees Fahrenheit. Peter, I'm gonna say it's too high. It's got to be about one twenty-five Fahrenheit. One twenty-five. One twenty-five, and you said one forty-four. Four. Oh shit! The answer is one thirty-six. That means that. I'm eight off. And Pete is six off, right? They're, they're no. No. Nine. Pete's so nine. Steve oh, wins Steve. a goddamn again. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, By my. one point, some bitch. Poor bastard. <laughs> hey, Steve, you know what? There you go. <laughs> Man, Steve, I'm running, sorry, dude. Running the board. <laughs> no, that All one right. was close. I mean, that, that was really close. Okay. Uh,. This is the last question. 136. Jesus Christ. That is fucking crazy hot. That is like, I mean, you know, motherfuckers say Africa hot. <laughs> Fuck that, Africa hot. Hot. Yeah, I know. Okay, here we go. Uh, number six. There is enough DNA in the average person's body to stretch from the sun to the planet Pluto and back. No, you're already wrong. Your right. statement's already wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. How is that? Repeat that. What did you just say? There is enough DNA in the average person's body. In other words, if you take every strand of every sure, DNA. Sure, I got you. I'm following that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. 
From Earth to where? Pluto. To Pluto. Okay, to Pluto. Okay, that's correct. Yes, to Pluto. The orbiting body and, known as Pluto. And back. Yeah, you said planet. That was wrong. But go ahead. Pluto's a planet. Uh, how many times? <laughs> What's that? Actually, what I said is from the planet Earth to Pluto. No, you said but planet it, Pluto. We can, we can do the playback on it, but I heard planet Pluto. Fine, we will. Okay, so uh, how many times can you lap your DNA? Can you connect your DNA chains to Pluto, the planet, and the Earth and back? How many laps can you make? Steven. Where am I going? Pluto. You and your DNA. My DNA will never go to Pluto. The Yaga people live there. The fun guy, you know? The fuck Amigo no, live there, don't there. they? <laughs> yeah, yeah the fuck Migo, that. They will name. climb down our fucking DNA, there. and that's the end of mankind. Mike, no. Yeah, no, that answer is, uh, no, that's, I refuse to answer. It's terrible. I uh, won the game Dave, already, so Pete doesn't have to answer either. That's right. Dave, we're, <laughs> we don't have to do price <laughs> street rules because uh, there's, only, there's only two of them, so it doesn't matter. But... Um, <laughs> I don't want the Migo. Answer. I didn't. Ag I, I did not agree to to come on this thing and do Cthulhu stuff, man. Right, and allow the Migo agree, to though. come to Earth. That's fucked up, Mike. Oh, Cthulhu has strained your DNA, strung it up like a string of pearls, and sent it out to Pluto and back. How many times? Six. Six. Peter. Hold on. Oh, Hold on. Oh, he's, oh, he's going to the random chance. <laughs> I'm going to the dice. <laughs> hey, can I give you a can I give you a hint? Yeah, sure. Roll a D twenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're playing Star Trek. I'm gonna roll my special Star Trek die here. Oh, uh, the right. one that screws you every week. It does. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen's my numbers. Uh, 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 Mike, fourteen. Oh. Fourteen, and you said six. Six. Four, oh my God, the dice did not fuck you, Pete. All right. There is enough DNA in the average person's body. Uh, in, in my case, maybe a little extra. I might be able to do an extra lap or two, but to do seventeen laps to Plut the planet Pluto and back. Hey, wait, wait! I get hold on. I didn't get skunked. I get a. Point. I get a. <laughs> yeah, I got one point. I'm not completely. Our word. All right, now, you guys want to hear the tiebreaker real quick? Yeah, sure. Sure. Make it quick. How the hell? Okay, for, for two points, just to make Pete feel like he, three point five, three, four points, make Pete, Pete like he has a chance. Four right? points, okay. Whatever. As of July, as of the 23rd of July, 2019, the tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It stands... How many feet and or meters tall? It's going to make Peter. me feel worse. You're going to make me feel worse. Now I'm going to lose how, by more points. How tall is the tallest building in the world? 6,000 miles. Fuck, I don't know. Um, Hold on. <laughs> Fucking thing. Fuck, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's all the See, it, I, I, I had so many of these no questions, idea. I had to separate out. And ha I have two no, games. That's the we fucking idea, game. man. I don't know. And what, a mile, 5,280 uh, 5, feet. Okay, he said 5,280 feet, and you say? 1,750 feet. 1,750. Well, I believe by sheer math, I can do it in my head, uh, that you are correct because... The tallest building in the world, as of it is right now, is 2,717 feet. Yeah, there we go. Great. Wow. So four points to Steve. Yeah, all right, I got fucking trounced. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so we get a matter of perspective, that's about nine football, a little over nine football fields. Dude, that shit's all fucking oh, foreign to me. Died. I have – no, your camera's good. We can still see you. Uh, no, I, I mean it. The stand fell. Oh, okay. I have, dude, I have, when it comes to like building heights, I have no fucking idea. Like, I don't know, 1,000 feet, 10,000 feet, 100,000 feet, fuck, I, orbit, whatever. I'm... All right. Well, Steve, congratulations. Hey, man. Steve. You did 
did a phenomenal job. And this Wait, time, I had, no, I had no feeling at all that you were cheating. Congratulations. Hey, You're Steve. Welcome. Steve. <laughs> there you go. All for you, buddy. You get. All right. Hey, Mike. Mike, since since I since you're saying I won this thing, I I expect a prize. You're going to go buy a pair of my shoes, right? <laughs> you learned with my hands. Come on, I trounced him. That deserves money. Yeah, Mike, I agree. Yeah. I will... have to throw in that Cthulhu question. There you go, Mike. What, what size shoe do you wear, Steve? What? What size shoe do you wear? No, you don't have to buy me a pair of shoes. You no. buy you buy yourself a pair. No. Uh, <laughs> what size shoe do you wear? Size eleven. I will buy a pair of your shoes, but they're your shoes I'm buying, so. <laughs> I will bring them to the next convention you're at. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap this up. We've gone All right. long as usual. All right, everybody, real quick, let's do this. Let's do the thing. Make sure you go to nerdragenews.com and check out aliveshoes.com forward slash nerd-rage.shoes or nerd-living or nerd-professional. Also, check out Steve's stuff at Amazon. Uh, you can look him up, just uh, Dr. Steve Wallet. Um, and he's also on IMDb uh, as Steve Wallet. He's done, it just does so much shit. Books, movies, fucking shoes. Um, but, but, uh, but absolutely check out all this stuff. And I forgot to mention earlier, because it just didn't occur to me, but I should have, uh, you know, David Benavides, one of our number one fans, right? He was in Don't Say His Name. He had a big part in that as well. Uh, he was like in that second, like the, the, the second half of that movie. So him and his daughter. Oh, what the fuck is with this thing? Hold on. There we go. All right. The, the I, I fucking streaming thing is fucking with us. Anyway, so um, so make sure you check out all of Steve's stuff. And, uh, and, and hey... We don't know what the next couple of weeks is going to look like because apparently YouTube has decided to kill Hangouts, which is what we use to like initially to get our, our, our group together. Um, so we're going to have to change up some shit. So if it looks different in the next week or so or whatever, our show may change our format a little bit. We'll see. Uh, we've already got plans. We already knew this. We knew this was coming. We just weren't sure when. Um, so you'll just have to bear with us if there's some growing pains. So there may, some, may be some tech wits coming up. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say the tech wits show right again. <laughs> I mean, it, it takes a lot to put this show together. I mean, you see like you got the scores and pictures and, and overlays and names and all this shit that we put on the show. Uh, and music and all that kind of stuff. Well, that that doesn't happen by accident. There's a lot of programming that goes into that, and a lot of things have to happen. So if we use a streaming program that changes shit up, it can really mess with like, oh fuck, that maps differently now, and it won't handle this. And that, uh. so we'll see, we'll see. We'll try and bring you the same show we bring you every week. We're just gonna see. We'll see what happens. We've got a couple things we're working on. So there's there's um. Uh, Google has a, what, what is the new thing they have? Uh, what was it? It's not, I want to say match. It's not match. It's, um, meetup, right? Or meet Google meet is one of the things we were playing with. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but we'll, we'll still be here. We'll be here next week. For audio listeners. Sorry. We just wasted three minutes of your time. Go Pete, run that footage. All right. You <laughs> motherfucker. I'm just trying to help people, you know, prepare for change because people like All Mike. Terrible. All People like Mike don't like change, do we, Mikey? Not thanks to you. You, you're P Pete's bootstrap therapy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, guess what? You have just enjoyed another episode of The Myth Wits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe things wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Tweet us at Mythwits, because Mike will get that, and check out Mythwits.com. Myth, hey, and we said on the show, look, seriously, guys, if you, people, women, everybody, babies, no, no babies, but if you watch this show or listen to this show, please, like, just reach out and let us know you listen to it. We never hear from anybody working in a vacuum here. We know people are watching it. We see the stats. 
we just never hear from you because we would love to hear from you we'll share anything you got to say as long as it's nice and positive <clears throat> anyway myth wits is part of the tsr podcast network check out tsrpn.com and tsrgames.com for more cool stuff myth wits is a creative commerce product like and share it in all the places just don't edit it don't change it and don't put it on your feet you're bound to get nerd raid itis Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next Monday, Mike. Please validate us. Validate what we do. We have very thin, very, very shallow personalities. We need, we need to be validated.